Hey folks, welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. Today is a track breakdown from my release on You and Me. I think it was the fourth release, and this is the track Crowd Teaser. This was made very quickly during the old pandemic. It's only got 16 channels, um, and to be honest, it came together super, super quickly, and I was really amazed by the result. I don't think I really even mixed it down at the end. It was literally kind of a tune that came together, sounded dope, so I thought, why not put this out to the world? I've had a lot of great feedback from uh, people on this one. Some saying it kind of sounds like the old Died Sounderom stuff and the stuff on Freak and Sheet, which is Dan Ganache's old label. I have to say I do agree. And yeah, this, this tune is really cool. And I'm sure some of you will find some cool tips and tricks within it. It's only 29 minutes as well. So some nice golden nuggets in no time at all. Don't forget there is more videos like this inside Syntho, especially more on the creative process and then loads of deep dives of different genres and then track recreations and all sorts. So check that out in the link attached to this video. In today's video, we are doing a mix down of my recent track Crowd Teaser, which came out on Yumi Records. I'm going to give you a little, uh, what's the word? Spoiler. It's only got 15 channels in, so it's not going to take long to show you this one. And I think it's going to be a very interesting insight into how to make a killer track with only 15 channels. Because honestly, it is simple as hell. I nearly didn't release the track because it is so simple. Because it almost felt like a cheat code. But it's probably the track which I've had most messages about in recent times. And there's a whole lesson to be learned there. But yeah, let's get straight into it. So, Crowd Teaser, it was made last July. I managed to find it in the July folder because that's how I group my projects into each month. You'll see at the top there, it's called Micro Loop Mix. So, when I made it, I kind of had this micro house vibe all over it. And yeah, let's give it a play first to remind you all of how it's sounding. But as you can see, there is only 15 fucking channels. So, we'll open them all up so we can just see them like that, I think. Um, but yeah. Give it to the main break. Yeah, the track it sounds simple. It doesn't sound complicated, but the groove is so killer. Um, it really has that 2012 died sound and vibe to it. I think I've had about 10 people, no, more, about 20 say, oh, it sounds like old school died sound room. If you don't know who died sound room is, go and get yourself educated. He's my favorite DJ. Probably my biggest like 
idol, I don't like the word idol, but probably the artist I really admire the most. He's such a sick DJ. His old tunes are fucking sick. His new tunes are sick. And he's a top, top guy. So enough about diet anyway. This tune, yeah, simple. And I'm going to kind of explain to you the secret formula to how it grew so well. So usually we go from start to finish in terms of elements, but uh, I want to go into congas first, but we're going to look at the sender returns just to remind ourselves. A, I've got my lexicon reverb, which is my drum reverb, which is used quite a lot. Reverb B is a vocal gold plate by Fab Filter, and that's used quite a lot as well. Then C, we've got ping pong delay. D, we've got another word delay. And then E, we've got distortion. I don't think the E is really used. So as you can hear on the intro, this track goes like this. The whole groove is this conga. And this is making the track, I promise you, without that conga, listen. With the conga. It's just honestly making the track dance. And I'm going to talk about these first because this is how I started the track. I'm pretty sure I did kick and conga first. And this, unintentionally, I created this 2013 kind of vibe. The track was originally called 2013, but I thought it's a bit fucking shit. And it's three congas from an 808. Right. And what I did was I put an EQ on to get rid of any bass. So we can... So just get rid of any bass. And it's this delay. If we play that on a loop now, something I've not really done before is use a big delay on the congas. I don't know why I did it, but listen to no delay. Put it on. And how many times have I told you guys that delay is the key to the groove? You can get groove from delay, you can create space, you can fill out your tune. Honestly, never ending. And the delay, if you open up, it's just an eighth dot. It's like a ping pong delay. With Echo Boy. And then we've got another EQ, just to roll off a bit more low end, just to double check it. And then we've got the kick start, just to just ease it off so it doesn't go over the kick too much. But with the kick drum, It's insane. That groove itself could just go on forever. And if we open it up, we've just got three here. We've got the velocities as different on that one at the end, but the velocities aren't even that different. So, And it almost just feels like a cheat code because it's just so groovy, that. And look, it's over four. So you guys that are still doing your percussion over one bar, Get it out, get it out to two bars, get it to four bars. I recently have been struggling with my grooves a bit. And I did a lesson the other day for someone that signed up for the year membership. And I really realized again, the fundamentals of call and response and the basics. So just to remind everyone, call and response is when the first half of the groove then has a response to the second half. So it could be an extra note. So you see that note there, that is the response. And it's really subtle, but it honestly adds up all these responses. And it's really easy to forget and just kind of make your grooves just repetitive, but it really helps. And then if we go at the bass in. And the bass is just the hip hop sub bass preset by Ableton. So if you press command shift, uh, Command and G, sorry. Oh no, Command and F, sorry. Command and F. You can type in hip hop sub, uh, hip dash sub, sorry, hip dash hop <laughs> sub. Hmm, maybe you can't get it anymore in Ableton 11. You used to be able to get this preset in Ableton 10, which was a 
really nice sub. Maybe if you go to operator, let's try. Uh, go to instruments, operator, bass, then scroll down. Oh, it's gone. So if anyone able to eleven, the hip hop sub bass is now gone. But yeah, it was just a really nice sub. But it's just a sign here. Maybe I'll try and save this and include it in this attached to the video. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to save this bass. Everyone can have the bass. I don't mind. Um, but yeah, it's a already processed one by Ableton and it's so fucking fat. It just has a bit of tone to it. And then I've got an EQ on it just to take out any mud. You can see the white line there on Pro Q. Let's get rid of them frequencies. And then I did compress it a bit because... I don't think it's even doing anything. Yeah, a tiny bit because it was just a bit out of control. And the Vertigo has a bass compression preset, which I always use. And then we've got the side chain as well, which as you know is important. The kick and bass just sit nicely. And that low end there is so killer. And if you look at the kick drum, the kick drums are kind of pokey 909. So if we just get on its own, it's got the EQ, clean it up, the pull tech, which is the Nice EQ, which Brandon's been using a bit in his videos. It's nice to get a bit rounder. Another EQ, just get rid of any mud. As you can see there, it's just like... And then a bit of compression at the end to make it pop. Which I don't think the compressor's really needed. The kick drum sounds okay. It's not like the fucking best kick drum in the world, but it works with the low end and them congas. So yeah, that groove there. When I talk about never-ending groove and groove you can listen to for days and killer loops, that is a fucking killer loop. And then the clap. So the clap was layered. As you, the long-termers will know that I've got a one of the very first tutorials I did was my Ableton template, and this track was actually made using that template. So these claps are from. Just that template, and you can hear the clap. Nothing special, and it's just got an EQ on it. It's that layered with. Oh no, so it's that. Two di dirty old dusty claps. Nothing fancy at all there. We don't need to spend any time on that. I think it's got a bit of reverb on the sender returns. No, not even any reverb, so it's completely dry. Then we've got the hats here. Call and response. And what I've done there is I put the grids on 32 and then you can get your little shuffle notes in there. So when it's like that, you can kind of get these extra notes in that are quicker. You just go right click at the bottom and change the grid to 32 and then you see you get more lines that's 16 that's 32 you get more lines you get more intricate with your drum patterns then but yeah call and response guys basics That's kind of loud, but it works. I like it the way it is. Then in these sections here, I've got an extra hat. Just a know. So it just sits on top of it. But this, honestly, is giving it that groove. Because look, it's over four again. The space in the groove. It's not all that tight, which a lot of people are doing all the time. It's literally conga, hats, and then I bring these snares in these sections. And again, it's just an 808 sample. Quite dirty. So 
got decapitator on the, decapitator on the it's just rolling off at the top end I think yeah bit of drive I've got an EQ side chain man this is this I made this track a while back like I've said and I've definitely learned loads on mixing since then but like the mix on this sounds decent and there's barely any processing and it just shows you that you do not need to spend a ridiculous amount of time and intricacy on things sometimes it's just the groove can speak for itself and what's really interesting on this is I've got this reverb here and I recorded this in live so on the build ups the reverb goes up you'll see in here you see there and the delay so watch this now again on the build up all the sender returns so a look that just shows you sender returns effects automation can just work and look that wasn't even that well thought out it was just live recorded and i just turned them up as it was building up the track lovely stuff hey so yeah that's the drums then on the group i've got this studio which i don't use anymore on drums i feel like it compresses it a bit so that's that's what i used to do then this vertigo compressor which if you've been following this for a while you'll know i always use it's a compressor by uad they've got a preset called drum bus and i just adjust the threshold to suit as it's made by some of the best engineers in the game so if you think you can make better um presets and them probably quite deluded so it's better just to use a nice starting point then just tweak it for your own use which is what i've always done and always will do as i'm trying to make good tracks not make a perfect compressor and yeah that is the drums and the bass which is kind of fucking crazy because yeah there's only what one two three four five six channels there because obviously some of them are grouped so let's move on to this loop, actually, because I think this sits in the back nicely. And this loop, I think I just chopped it up. And it's kind of what i've been talking about a lot recently with the uk tech house thing and how you can chop up loops to create grooves i can't remember what video it was the other day i did one where i chopped up some loops to make something cool i think it was when i did that the uk tech house on myself i think but yeah that is i just chopped it up because you can see at the start then it builds so it's just a matter of finding a loop, guys, and then just ch chopping bits out of it. Because it almost sounds a bit weird, that. Then I think I've got some delay on it as well. Yeah, I've got delay. So take the delay off. It's very dry there, okay? Put the delay back on and the reverb. Sounds really, really sick with the groove. Open hats come in. And right, let's do the money shot because this helps a lot. So, Dreamy Vox, no effects on it, as you can see. Um, and this just comes in. There, C3. should really have taken the low end out of it as you can see i was being very fucking complacent 
but it sounds good anyway, it doesn't really matter. So, let's hear that way. So it's got the delay on. If you took the delay off and you took the reverb off, just does that with the delay on. I hope everyone's watching this and thinking, shit, I need to start using more delays again and start doing the call and response and start getting these little noises in. Let's watch this. And that just gets repeated there. Then in the breakdown, watch this. I just mess around with it and it goes down an octave. that sound down all the way down to E1. Then lock all the way down there. Simple, simple, simple. Then lock again. It just does the same thing again there, so I just wrote, wrote, wrote a different pattern for each breakdown. And then that just messes around there, just provides some kind of... Probably should have EQ'd that sound, but so lead, 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 lead. This sound, it's the same melody all the way through, and this is only over two bars. This isn't even call and response, and it's just the same thing, which is probably could have been slightly better. And it's got delay on it. If you turn the delay off. Put the EQ on. It's got some under some low end. It's got a mic shift on, which is giving it some chorus. And then we did it with the Jupiter 8. This mod bell preset. I'm not sure why I chose the Jupiter 8. And this doesn't even have any automation on. It just comes in out of nowhere. And this sound is that complete 2013 Deep House creepiness. loop here actually let's check this out i think it's a chopped up loop again yeah and again it's only just got a little eq yeah this track's got a lot of kind of things i would consider Correct, but the fact it sounds fine is kind of goes against some of the things I say because like, I wouldn't leave a little sound in a loop like that. Cause you can hear that like, look a lot of clicks, but it also says if something sounds good, it sounds good, like it doesn't matter, does it? How it's been done. So, then we come to the vocals, which help this track a lot. And I'm going to show you this vocal trick, which I've not really shown anyone yet. So, if you go to any loop, so if we press Command F and go Vox. Feel the beat now. Feel if you right click it and click Slice a New MIDI Track, right, it then slices into 16 parts like this. Oh, that's what it done too. Let me do a different one. Speak. Yeah. 
Oh, this one. Sliced in with your truck. Uh, do 16 note though. Ah, oh, it's too long. Let's do South Park. Slice in your mini truck. Watch this. So if you do that, it chops into these little 16s. And if you get a cool vocal sound, you then get these like little parts like this. So that's nice, that one. That could be like a chord. <laughs> but yeah, you can do it with anything. And then you can mess around with it. So that's what I did with these. If you look at this one, it's called like a house music vocals. We can't hear it. There we go. Because look, you can literally just do any any note anywhere. You can create these really cool percussive sounds like. Got a bit of reverb, a bit of delay. The fact there's no processing again just shows that this was just a groove. And it's only 125 BPM, which is like unheard of <laughs> in the uh, 2021 where everything seems to be pushing 130 plus. I think that's what gives it the 2015 feel as well. 2014, sorry, 2013. God, I've lost my years now. And then look, this, I did the exact same thing. Did the exact. Say this. So together we've got this kind of like got a lot of clicks and horrible stuff in there, but who cares? So look, as that comes out, you can then see this orange loop come in. So it's almost like when that goes away, the orange loop comes in. You can see it here as well. The orange comes in and then that comes in. Well, sorry, the, yeah, the orange comes in and that goes out. Clicks everywhere, man. And then got another box. This is the exact same thing again. I did the same thing, chopped up a loop. Can't, it sounds like he's going like, can't go back or something. I literally just, I just fucking drew notes at random places. Master, I've got the UAD Ampex. Which I'm not sure is actually making it sound much better, but yeah. It's funny because a lot of the tracks I've done have been quite uh, well thought out and I can explain them in detail. Whereas this one, it's like, here's the jam and this is what it sounds like and it's fucking worked. And as you'll notice, it's actually B2 on the EP because I didn't really think it'd be that well received. And then when I was sending the EP out to DJs, we we're like, oh, crowd is sick. I'm like, oh, shit, this should have been the lead track. But yeah, guys, that is crowd teaser. It's a simple one. I'm going to try and include this sub bass um, attached to this project. I need to see how to save it and whatnot so you can all use the sub. But yeah, if there's any questions on it, let me know. Hopefully it's given you some inspiration because I've emphasized there the basics of what we can do to get groove 
things like toms, delays, call and response, chopping up the vocals, and it doesn't always have to be complicated. Sometimes simplicity is the key. Simple simpleness is actually the hardest thing of all. So yeah. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will catch you soon. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Please just share with me your thoughts and anything else you want to see. I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you all very soon.